Despite Japanese aggression in the Far East, it was British defence policy to make no attempt to agitate the Japanese Empire by attacking first. Added to this was the issue that the war in Europe was taking more than the lion's share of material and supplies. Southeast Asia Command were told in no uncertain terms that they were the bottom of the pile when it came to reinforcements in late 1941. However, Japan's build-up of an aggressive stance led the Royal Navy to make plans to send a balanced force to the Far East as a deterrent. This would have been made up of seven older capital ships, one aircraft carrier and 24 destroyers. Unfortunately, it would have taken until March 1942 to assemble and dispatch the fleet. Australia was also requesting the dispatch of a fleet at the soonest time possible. These factors led Churchill to consider sending a smaller force of a modern battleship, a cruiser and an aircraft carrier in October of 1941. Churchill and the Navy clashed over this difference in approach until a compromise was reached on the 20th of October. It was decided that the battleship Prince of Wales would sail to Cape Town and then another decision how to proceed would be made when it arrived in port. Ordered in 1936, the Prince of Wales had only been completely fitted out in March of 1941. She had then seen action against the Bismarck in May. The Prince of Wales mounted 10 14-inch guns at a top speed of 28.5 knots. It had limited capability against aircraft. The Prince of Wales headed out to Clyde with three destroyers and arrived in Cape Town on the 16th of November. The Admiralty made no attempt to stop the ship from continuing then onto Ceylon, where it was joined by the battlecruiser HMS Repulse and two more destroyers. Repulse was a First World War era battlecruiser mounting six 15 inch guns. It had not been updated since its launching and was totally inadequate against aircraft attacks. Despite the shortcomings of both the Prince of Wales and the Repulse, they were still a serious threat to the Japanese lines of communication in the South China Sea. The group headed by the Prince of Wales was named Force Z and consisted of two capital ships and four destroyers by the time it had reached Singapore in the late afternoon of the 2nd of December. On the 6th of December, reports of a large fleet of Japanese landing craft spotted south of Indochina indicated the beginnings of hostilities. Two days later, reports arrived of the Japanese landings in Thailand and Malaya and Singapore was bombed where the Prince of Wales was at anchor. The scale of the Japanese attacks soon became apparent, and whilst the Admiral to decide what to do, Acting Admiral Sir Tom Phillips called a conference with his officers and they thought the best course of action would be to take the offensive against the landings in the north at Malaya and Thailand. As the force sailed from Singapore on the 8th of December, it was apparent that air cover was not going to be available and surprise would have to be the major factor in defeating the Japanese landings. Deciding that Kotobaru would be the best target, the force sailed north for 0400 hours on the 9th of December. Cover from heavy weather and the distance from the Japanese airbases also helped Phillips to take this decision. However, at 13.45 hours, the Japanese submarine I-65 spotted the British ships while remaining undetected itself. Later, at 17.45 hours, three Japanese aircraft were spotted tailing the force. Changing course to the northwest at 18.55 hours, the British ships then came within 22 miles of the Imperial Japanese Navy task force that was searching for Force Z. At 20 hundred hours, Phillips conferred with his senior staff and decided they would abort the mission to Kotubaro and head south to Singapore, now some 275 miles south. To further add to the dilemma of where best to move the fleet, a report reached Force said that a landing had taken place at Kwantan, only 120 miles from their present location. The report was false, but unknowingly, Phillips decided to investigate and changed course at 0.52 hours on the 10th of December. At 0800 hours, Force said dispatched an aircraft and a destroyer to investigate the landing report. Nothing was found, but Force said lingered for another 90 minutes investigating reports of other boats in the area. At 1015 hours, a Japanese aircraft was spotted, followed by an attack wave at 1100 hours. The Japanese had failed to contact the British ships on the surface, so had dispatched nearly 100 torpedo bombers and light bombers from Indochina to find Force Z. The aircraft had flown almost to Singapore without detecting the British ships. Turning back north, some of the aircraft spotted Force Z around 1100 hours. The planes were spread out from searching and the attack developed into a series of waves of G3M Nels and G4M Bettys. The first attack was from eight Nels dropping 550 pound bombs, doing some damage and causing a fire on the Prince of Wales. The British anti-aircraft fire was heavy and damaged five of the attacking planes. A second attack was made up of 17 torpedo carrying Nels, again against the Prince of Wales. The Japanese claimed three torpedo hits, but the British only confirmed two. However, the hits buckled the propeller and flooded several compartments, listing the ship and slowing her speed. The damage also meant the loss of the main anti-aircraft guns. Repulse was also attacked by nine aircraft, though no hits were recorded. A third attacked wave zeroed in on the Repulse, but again was successful in striking the ship. 
Then the following wave, comprising of 26 Bettys, attacked both ships. Six attacked the crippled Prince of Wales and 20 launching against the Repulse. The Repulse was attacked in a pincer manoeuvre by the Japanese planes. Five torpedoes slammed into the ship and it sank at 12.33 hours. Another wave of nine Japanese aircraft concentrated on the escorting destroyers, none of which were hit. The final attack from seven Nels focused back on the Prince of Wales. All seven planes dropped 1,100 pound bombs, one of which hit and caused a severe explosion on the main deck. The Prince of Wales was listing badly and speed had been reduced to five knots. The order to abandon ship was given at 13.15 hours and five minutes later the ship had sunk. The three remaining destroyers began the task of rescuing the survivors of the two ships. The Japanese aircraft had begun their return flight to the air bases, so the rescue went unmolested. From the repulse, 513 crew were lost, with 796 rescued. The Prince of Wales lost 327 men, with 1,285 being rescued. Three Japanese aircraft were lost, along with 21 crew, and 27 aircraft were damaged in the attack. The sinking of the Prince of Wales and the Repulse was a major blow to the British Navy and brought about the end of British naval dominance in the Far East. Phillips would later become vilified for his actions based on his lack of combat experience. He had a good knowledge of naval matters and the effects of air power against ships and the difficulty of his mission in the Far East, where naval power was paramount. The full nature of Japanese air power was unknown to Phillips and the Royal Navy in general, yet the threat was judged to be unimpressive by both. This was supported by the fact that the Prince of Wales had previously been attacked by Italian torpedo bombers and had repulsed them. Also, judging by the performance of existing British torpedo bombers, it was thought that if Force Z stayed 400 miles from the Japanese air bases in Indochina, they would be relatively safe from air attack. All of these factors were at play when Phillips ordered Force Z to sail, and he is being judged unfairly, as he was only acting on what he thought was the best course of action with an inadequate force, and his senior staff had agreed. The decision to send Force Z to Singapore as a deterrent against an expansionist imperial power was Churchill's and Churchill's alone, and because of this, the sinking of the ships was squarely his responsibility.